morning. Anybody? Anybody? Call Jesus this morning, people. Call Jesus. Can you call him this morning? Or don't you know him? I'm going to make you happy. You're sad. God's going to make a way for you. folks. He'll lift your burden. And you'll have me dancing. Hey. can listen to that and you guys probably don't understand that all right Ugh. well today is Friday and today is the 8th of September all right let's get things rolling here and uh, let's see I need to write some things down here all right hold on a second here folks hold on let me see something I got to take a look here. Let me go back. I'm going to look at my YouTube account here real quick. Hang in there. Don't run away if you're watching me. This is really exciting stuff, man. Watch me open a laptop YouTube page. This is exciting. Not every... You can hear my wife Selma in the background laughing. This is exciting. This is what you millennials like. Weird stuff, right? So I'm weird, all right? All right, here we go. I'm getting there. I think. All right, here we go. It's opening. Wow, isn't this exciting? All right, I know you guys like this. You guys are weirdos too, really. All right, millennials, you know you're getting old. You realize that, I guess. All right, let me see. Uh, I can never figure out how to... Oh, there it is. All right, hold on. All right, let me see what my other account was. Six and well, we only got 300 views in a day, so that's not bad, but it's not good either. We want to get millions, right? So, we're at uh, 61,904 views, okay? Uh, YouTube. All right. And then our hearts are good, all right? All right, so here we go. You ready for this? You ready to get started now? Ready to act like mature people here? We're going to be mature. All right. All right, so here's the stats. All right. Hey, hi there. Uh, is that Irma? Uh, Timma. Or whoever. Whatever. All right, let me tell you. This is, uh, my name is Missionary Norman Ector. I'm broadcasting from Missouri, center of the universe, our home, which is the center. I'm 71. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. Been doing this for 43 years. Five tours in Asia, seven years in New Mexico. Here's some stats for you. 29,618 views on Periscope. On YouTube, we have 61,904 views of our videos. And hearts on Periscope, we're at 258,730 hearts on Periscope. All right. That's hard to believe that people put a little heart watching us, right? I broadcast daily. And Selma, my wife, broadcast on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Sunday, 11 o'clock Central Standard Time. And all we're talking about is how you're going to hell, and we got a way to help you go to heaven. That's in Jesus. 
We're Protestant Christian missionaries. What's a Protestant Protestant? What's a Protestant Christian missionary? A Protestant, apart from all of these hypocrite Christians you see out there, a Protestant Christian is a person that believes and follows the teachings of Jesus according to the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament as that person reads it and understands it, the words of Christ. All right? If you can't read some, I read it to you. Simple as that. You are only accountable to yourself. If you follow and listen to somebody, if you follow old Norman, me, and listen to what I say, and then you go tell everybody what Norman said, this is what you need to do, because that's his uh, interpretation. Let me tell you something. You end up in a spiritual ditch. Don't listen to any man on the planet. Don't do it, folks. You better read what you're going to be judged on. You're not going to be judged on, well, I'm going to judge. Jesus is not going to say to you, I'm going to judge you because Norman said this. Norman said that. No. You're only going to be judged on the words that you know that Jesus said to your heart and mine. And the Holy Spirit of God is no dumb, dumb teacher. He'll quicken things to your heart and you'll know what's right. It's The problem is you choose to do what is wrong, right? It's not going to be on God, it's going to be on you because he's going to give you a little tinkering device called your free will. You're going to decide if you're going to do it or not. Not God. God already sent Jesus to save you. He wants you walking with him. But you're the one choosing not to walk with him. You understand? It's on you. You can sit here and listen to me today and you can say, well, I don't believe in God. You just don't want to believe. Because why? Okay, so here's the thing. Why wouldn't you want to believe in God? Let's see all the usual excuses. Oh, the book is written by men. I don't believe there's a God. Why did God have wars? Why did my grandmother have a hangnail? You know, all everything you can think of. But people choose daily to serve God or not. So, you either are going to watch this video this Friday, the 8th of September, 2017. Whether it's on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, wherever you're going to watch this. Off our website at GodSpokesman.com. Wherever you you're going to decide. You're going to say... Well, I'm. I don't. I need to go and do what I need to do here. I got important thing. I got to go shopping. I got to go to work. My kids need this. I got to go here. I got to go there. I have this appointment. I have to go to the doctor. I have to go to the dentist. I've got a. a I got a real project at work. I got to get done. To do this. I got to do that. Everyone has an excuse. All right, so what are you going to do today? Hey, hi there. Thank you for the hearts. All right, keep them coming. All right, so today you're going to decide you are charming. Wow, you you better wake up. <laughs> you hear Selma in the back, she's laughing too. Whoever said I'm charming, you better watch out, man. All right, well, I appreciate I am charming, right? 71 years old, I got to be something. I don't mind being charming. I've been called a lot worse, all right? Today is the day of salvation. What are you out there in that cyber world going to do today? Are you still going to push on through this Friday thinking you can make it to Monday? Are you waiting till the end of this work day so you can go party tonight on Friday, you millennials? Are you so hooked into your phones that all you do is walk around with a cell phone in front of you because you're so introverted you can't communicate with people anymore? You understand that phone is about the worst thing you can really have, to be real honest. All right. When you, your whole life is centered around a little chat box, and that's your life.
That's your total sum interest. And all, and I, a lot of times I think it is, hey, somebody, somebody, somebody love me, please. Somebody say something good to me. All right? This world is a lonely place without God. And even as a Christian, there, there's lonely times in the Lord. Let me tell you, you'll think God went to Mars on vacation somewhere. <laughs> and I'm telling you, as a missionary, it seems like it. But this whole thing about God, Christ, the Bible, being spiritually born again, is something that initially happens to every believer. They're spiritually born again. You're flooded with God's love and forgiveness. This is an actual, physical, emotional transformation, being spiritually born again. It really happens. And if you think you're a Christian today, going to them churches or watching on the television and thinking you're a Christian because you go along, hey, hi there. If you think you're a Christian today, and if you cannot honestly say, well, I became a Christian and I experienced God's love and forgiveness at that moment that you became a Christian, you can rest assured you're not spiritually born again. You're just a religionist. Religionists are good people. They don't break the law. But you could be anything. You could be a you could be a Hindu, Buddhist, uh, Islam, Roman Catholic, Baptist, Methodist, Amish, Mennonite, Pentecostal. It don't make any difference. Religions are religions. They're meaningless. All right. You have to be spiritually born again. And when you're spiritually born again, there's a birth process. Your head's gonna come out. <laughs> You're not born till that head comes out and you start sucking up that oxygen. And let me tell you, the oxygen you're going to breathe on is called grace. And once you get take a swallow of grace into your life, let me tell you something. The, the results will be joy, 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 love, and forgiveness happening. That's going to be the incoming thing into your life. At that moment, you're sincere with God. You got that? When you honestly say three things to God, number one, you're sorry for your rebellious life. Number two, you want Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And three, you'll do what Jesus says in the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament, as you read, as you understand. If you don't do it, you're just sucking in air and nothing's going to happen. But if you are sincere and, and believe let me tell you, the spirit of the living God will come into your life. You will experience love and forgiveness. And if you don't, you're not born again. I'm sorry, you can confess all you want, Jesus as your Lord, and believe it with all the strength you got. If there's no joy, love, and forgiveness in your heart, you're not saved. You're playing the game. There's something missing in most time, 99.9% that you will never hear in the church house is repentance. Repentance doesn't mean stop drinking, drugging, or sexing, or being bad. Repentance means to turn your life to the teachings of Jesus. Read and obey. You don't do it, you're going to the fire. You do it, you're going to the streets of gold and the jasper walls. Again, when you're spiritually born again, there will be a physical transformation as well as a spiritual. The physical will affect your mind, your life, your emotions. You will be totally forgiven, cleansed, and loved all in a split second in time. And I've had people say, well, that didn't happen to me. I happened incrementally. One day it was this, and the next couple of years later this happened, a couple of years later that. That means it doesn't work like that, folks. The moment you really, truly experience God's love and forgiveness, that's when you're really spiritually born again. Not before. 
That little baby that can stick his arm out the birthing canal doesn't mean he's born. Just because he's got his hand out there jiggling around. He can stick his little foot out there and twinkle them toes. That don't mean he's born. He just got a foot out. A lot of folks think they, they're spiritually born again and all they got sticking out of that birthing canal is their little pinky. It doesn't work like that. You got to be full born. Full born spiritually is when you say to God, you're sorry for your rebellious life. You want Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He's real to you that time. At this time, when you get saved, when you say to God you're sorry for your sins, Jesus isn't 2,000 years in the past. He's present, current, right with you. Those moments you're saying to God you're sorry for your rebellious life. That's when Jesus is alive and well. He's not something in the history books. He's real with you. And when you make this determination in your mind, additionally, that you will obey Jesus, that's repentance. If you think for one moment you can believe and do anything you want as a Christian, whatever seems right within your own eyes, you become a religionist. You are not spiritually born again. You are not a Christian. You have to repent. Repent doesn't mean to stop drinking and drugging and sexing and doing all the bad things of life. If you're going to become a Christian, well, of course you're not going to do evil. Duh. You have to trust and obey the words of Jesus as you read and as you understand. Not what I say, not what someone else says. You have to read. You got to make the determination you're going to do what Jesus said. If you got it in your mind, you don't understand, and oh, oh I can't do it, it's too difficult. My friends won't be around me. <laughs> hey, you're not a Christian. After you've accepted Christ, now here's a good one. After you have accepted Christ, and you read them words of Jesus where he commanded his disciples to go forth, teach, and make disciples. Those words are going to come to you in your life. You can rest assured of that. They're going to come right at you just like an arrow. Somebody's going to reach into that quiver and pull out that arrow, and it's going to shoot right into your heart. No, you're not going to be able to duck and weave and blame it off and push it off on somebody else to do it. It's going to come straight to your heart and mind. Go forth, teach, and make disciples. You know what you do? Either you'll lift up the shield of faith, or you'll lift up your shield of denial. Denial. That's a shield, too. The message of the Lord can come to you and you can put up your denial faith. I'm not doing that. I can't do that. I've got a wife and kids. i got bills. I can't be going on the mission field. It takes somebody more intelligence than me. I don't know the Bible. I don't know this. I don't... Denial. You deny Jesus, the Bible says. Jesus said, you deny him before men, he'll deny you before the Father. You can burn up that faith shield. You can use every Tom, Dick, and Harry's excuse that you got out there in the Christian community. You can go around all these hypocrite Christians in the church saying they love God, believe the Bible, and they're sitting right there in that church house every day. They don't believe God's word. God's word, and when you're spiritually born again, let me tell you folks, Jesus gives the commands, not you. It's not what you want to do as a Protestant Christian, as a follower of Jesus. It's not about you and your will to be done. It's about God and his will to be done in your life through, through you, the spiritually born again. 
The gospel message is only going to come by the preaching of the word. God's not sending some giant angel down. And everybody's going to look at this angel and say, Oh, I'll be a Jesus guy now. I saw the angel. No. The only way you're going to be spiritually born again is by hearing the gospel message of salvation, which is you will confess with your mouth that you're sorry for your rebellious life. Number two, you ask for Jesus in your heart and life. For he's your savior. He's the one making it all possible. It's by the Father's grace that you can ask for forgiveness. It's by the Father's grace you can believe in Jesus. It's by the Father's grace that you're going to read the New Testament truths of Jesus and do it. If you don't do it, you're going to hell. You're not going to heaven. I, I, I just can't tell you how sad it is here. I'm sitting here. In St. Charles, Missouri, and I know, I know what I'm saying is the truth. I can talk to them blue in the face, and I have a lot of times. And people just keep on chugging right down that old Broadway of destruction. It's like they don't even believe the Bible. They don't even believe that God is real. And they'll jam up in that church house every week. I watch people go to these churches, and I know they're false teachers. They could care less about biblical truth, and yet I can go by and I can see the parking lot full of cars. They got every Tom, Dick, and Harry with every kind of belief system you could think of in their intent. They don't care what you think as long as you come and pay them a little money because they got to keep that thing rolling week after week. It's all about money. It has nothing to do with God. It's a counterfeit religion. Christianity today is a counterfeit. Be wise. How are you going to know counterfeit? You got to have the truth. You got to have the real thing to understand that this isn't real what they're showing and practicing. This is the counterfeit. How are you going to know what the preacher man is saying if you don't read the Bible? You can read that New Testament and you can read the words they want you to read and you can listen to their interpretation of what they think it means. But you should be listening to the Holy Spirit of God telling you what it actually means. You understand the truth comes to you, you that are spiritually born again. But if you've never made the commitment to God, if you never said you're sorry for your rebellious life, if you've never really wanted Jesus as your Lord and Master, you just want to be part of a church crowd, if you never decide to obey Jesus and the Bible truths, you're not a Christian. You're just a religionist. You could be you could be a Roman Catholic. You could be Islam, Buddhist. It could be anything. Jehovah Witness, a Mormon, any of those false cults. Amish, Mennonite. You think God wants you to be in a horse and buggy going giddy up or go, giddy up and go? You think that's the gospel message? Live out somewhere without electric and nothing? Live back in the 1800s? You think that's what God's message to the world's about? About you and your little clicky friends wearing funny looking clothes and a horse and buggy? You think that's God's message to the world? You sit there and all the world's going to hell in the handbasket, and you have no responsibility to get out there. You got to make your little thing with the windmill or whatever you got to do. Just lunacy. Jesus walked among the Samaritans. These are a bunch of half breed religionists, you know, they intermarried with the world, everything. Jews didn't have nothing to do with these people. Now you could you could 
<laughs> I guess today you could call a lot of different races like the Samaritans a bunch of mixed breeds together. A lot of people are like that today. You got whole things mixed up, societies, cultures. Today it's the same thing. Jesus walked among the Samaritans. They knew that they weren't Jewish. They knew what sin, sinful, rebellious life they came from. They knew their mother and father weren't practitioners. They knew that they just, they let love and lust control their life. I reckon that's a good point, isn't it, today? Love and lust control the people of the world today. How many people are shacked up today? Love and lust, the LL people, all right? Love and lust. Jesus walked among the Samaritan people. Great story about the lady at the well. You know the story. And the woman couldn't figure out why Jesus, a Jew, would talk to her. And he revealed to her he, she was married several times and all this kind of stuff. And wasn't married to the guy she was shacked up with now. Not today, that's not a hard thing to, to realize. You can rest assured now when you meet someone, it's not how long you've been married, but how long you've been shacked up. You understand, We got I got people around me here that shacked up and, and don't think nothing about it. You understand, it's a weird place in life today, 2017. <coughs> Jesus walked among them Samaritan people. And those people believed in Jesus. The Jew who was right there, who knew, didn't believe what Jesus said, but the Samaritans did, some of them. Today, it's the same thing. Jesus can walk amongst the Protestant so-called Christians, evangelicals of the world, and they would not recognize Jesus. You understand that? So where is Jesus actually going today, 2017? Where is the gospel message today? Who are the real followers of Jesus? Where can you find them? Where is this great move of God? As Jesus proclaimed salvation when he walked the earth and people got saved, but the biggest part of the populace didn't. Which book are we in? We're not in the book. I'm talking today. All right? Today, where are, where is, why? Because I'm a good talker, man. I'm 71, you got a yak, all right? I'm telling you the way of salvation. If you want to listen, you get saved and become spiritually born again. So today, where is the Spirit of the Lord? Where is the move of God today? Most people think, well, the great move of God. Well, it has to be on TV. I guess maybe it's some preacher down in Texas, this Osteen guy. Oh, no, it's some TV evangelist. This is a move of God. Oh, no, it's over in Yugoslavia or, or whatever country it is now. Or maybe it's over in Africa. Or maybe, maybe it's the Chukchak Eskimos in North Russia. Where is the move of God today? Where, where do you, how do you know? How do you know where it's happening? So do you open a newspaper? Do you go on the internet? Do you go on CNN? Fox? Can you see? Oh, I'll Google it. Where is God moving today? Where are people accepting Jesus as their Lord and Savior? You won't find it. You know why? Because the world doesn't want anything to do with it. Nothing. You listen to the dum-dums in America and Europe, they want to interview these televangelists who say they are telling everyone about the Lord and God. 
Let me tell you something. When the world lifts up the preacher people and say, these are the leaders, you can rest assured they're not the leaders. When the world speaks highly of you, you can rest assured you're flat out out of God's will. You hear me? When the world speaks highly of you, Billy Graham, Franklin Graham, you know more than zero. All right. I find this point really interesting, so I'm just going to labor on into it. Where is the move of God today? I honestly can say I'm 71. I've been in this work a long time. And I've been tuned in to God a lot, all right? And I have to tell you, folks, I just don't see it. What I see is a smothered church, smothered by worldliness. A church world, world that thinks the only way they can survive is if fellow men give them something to survive on. Where is the gospel message today? I'll tell you a story. Last year, I went to... Uh, uh, Oh, it's the name of the restaurant. Can't think of it now. Uh, it's real popular here in the United States. But I published on our website that I would be going to this restaurant, Chick-fil-A, here in uh, St. Peter's, Missouri. The, every Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock, I would go to Chick-fil-A in the hope of meeting other people that want to pray, you know, just to greet and meet at this Chick-fil-A restaurant. And that they would want to pray for a revival in this area, St. Louis and St. Charles area. So, <laughs> I advertise that on Twitter, uh, Instagram, our website, daily. All right? 10 o'clock in the morning, Wednesday morning, I would be at the Chick-fil-A restaurant. I went to this restaurant every Wednesday for over a year. I'd stay there at least an hour every Wednesday morning. People knew me coming in, going out at that restaurant. Nice people. You know, I never got one person to come there to really meet. I had a lot of people chit-chat on uh, the social media sites about it, but that nobody would come. There was people that lived in this town who wouldn't come. Wouldn't make the commitment online, offline, through the line. They could care less. Because they have come to the place that they accept their religion, that they accept it right within their own eyes. And I'm fully convinced now that preaching the word of the Lord has been has been devalued so bad by money grubbing evangelists and missionaries that it's only all about finances. And that's all. It's not about salvation, it's not about healings. Physical, emotional healings. It's not about restoration. It's not about life-changing, glorious transformation of a human being from sin to grace. Nothing like that happens today. You don't read about people being saved and converted and being regenerated by the Holy Spirit of God, through God the Father's grace, through Christ the shed blood. You don't hear nothing about this phenomenon called being spiritually born again. Today, it's an organized, organized, bill-paying religion out there. 
You don't give them money, they're not going to be there. You don't give these guys money, they're out of there. You understand? It's like, well, I'm going to become a Christian. Well, who's going to pay you to become a Christian? Nobody's going to pay you. Then why in the world do you think that after you become a Christian that you want to be a preacher, man, that someone ought to pay you now? You got that? Did Jesus say, give me some money? Oh, I tell you. Today is the day of salvation, right? Today. Not tomorrow. Today, you're going to listen to this video again. As you, If you've been watching me, I, I'm, I'm really monotonous. I'm always talking about the same thing, and I just can't get past it. I could tell you stories on the mission field. I could tell you this, tell you that. But let me tell you something. The only thing that you there in the cyberland need to understand is getting saved. Three things. Number one, you're going to say to God, you're sorry for your rebellious life. Two, you're going to want Jesus as your Lord and Master. That's a tough one for people. But the third one, you have to read the words of Jesus and agree to do it. That's repentance. All right? You can't pick and choose. You can't say, well, I, I don't think I, I want to do that. I think this is a different age. <laughs> this is a different time period. Evil is everywhere. Evil is everywhere, folks. Don't think you're going to get around it. That way of salvation is just like you can imagine when you read that story of Jesus being taken to Golgotha, the hill to be crucified. You're going to walk up that hill too. And you're going to be alone when you do it too. You're going to stand before a mighty God and you're going to say, sincerely, you're sorry for your rebellious attitude. You understand that? It's just going to be you and God. There's nobody else there, folks. There's nobody going to be shaking your hand. You're going to say to God, you're actually truly sorry. That you want Jesus as your Lord. Not some emotional weeping, crying, oh, I lost my something, or some emotional rebound that you call out to God. It doesn't work like that. You, it might sound good. There's no 12-step program to get to God. There isn't you get to God because some tragedy happened in your life. It doesn't work like that. Salvation isn't based on some tragedy happening to you, and that's how you get saved. That, that is, that's just an absolute emotional lie that people say. I was shot with a 410 shotgun. A man was trying to kill me. Does that mean that's how I got saved with a 410 shotgun? <laughs> no. But it was the beginning, and months later I did get saved, but not because of that one night incident right then. When you become a Christian, you it's not going to be some rebound. Your girlfriend left you, your mama's gone, your daddy's gone, you don't have one, or some kind of tragedy. It doesn't work like that. You're going to come to God on God's terms. God says he wants you to confess with your mouth. Not because you're in some emotional bind and it makes you feel good that you're doing something good. No, you're going to say to God, you are sorry for your rebellious life and attitude towards him. You'll say it and you'll mean it too when this happens. You hear me? It's like going to that person that you're in school with or you can't stand, you work with, or your relative who you can't stand. And you're going to go to that person and say, my attitude towards you has been wrong. Will you please forgive me? 
you dread that you would walk a thousand miles to not do that. When you talk to God, it's going to be a real deal in your life. Freely, you're going to talk to God. You're going to choose this conversation with God. You and God alone. You and you alone. You're not going to get any money out of it. You're not going to get any position out of it. What you're going to receive is forgiveness and love like you've never experienced before when you meet God's requirements. If you think all you got to do is confess Jesus as your Lord and you're saved, you're nutty. It's not going to happen. You, repentance is returning to Jesus' truth and doing what Jesus said as you read it. That's repentance. You think that you can become a Christian? Well, I believe in Jesus, so I'm saved now, man. But you're not forgiven. Repentance is required to be saved, to be a Christian to be spiritually born again. You can't get there without repentance. That's why we got this lukewarm, stagnant, hypocrite, Christian, evan evangelical churches of today. You got every false cult out there, all Protestant denominations that have a name before are false, interdenominational, non-denominational, independent. All they're saying to you is, we'll do what we want because we are rebels against God. We don't believe this part of the New Testament. We think this part is good, this part not. We'll decide what we will do. That's the rebel. And all rebels, just like Jesus, walked amongst the Jews and the Samaritans. The Jews thought they were goody-goody two-shoes. Jesus came to save the world. He brought the new covenant. Jew and Gentile are one in love. There is no Jewish nation today. It's like saying there's an American nation. God bless America. It doesn't work like that, folks. This is, the United States of America is an evil place. All right? No. <laughs> it's like saying Israel is God's people. God's people are people that are spiritually born again all over the world. The Jewish people, for the biggest part, reject spiritual birth through Jesus Christ as the Messiah. They are no different from Roman Catholics or Islam or Palestinians. They're no different, folks. There is absolutely no different. They're going to hell. They're going to hell. Both groups are going to hell. You know what? They refuse to believe. You know, the Protestants in the United States of America and Europe, Australia, Asia, Southeast Asia, Indochina regions, they follow religions. Well, I'm going to heaven. No, you're not. The people that go into heaven are spiritually born again. If you don't think that's a necessary requirement, then there's no need for Jesus in your life. There's no need for a Bible. If you're not going to do what Jesus said, you got to be spiritually born again. If you're not going to do that and don't believe it's necessary, if you're going to pick and choose what your denomination says they believe and you go along with that, what's the point of the Bible? You understand? It's like saying, well, I want to be born, but I want on my terms. Well, when you plop out a birthing canal, let me tell you something. Either you're birthed or you're not. And we got a bunch of people that are pregnant full. They haven't been born again yet. The message of salvation has not been preached. What you hear today is a sorry, comical, cruel, vicious 
demonic gospel of acceptance and do anything you want. God loves you. Do what you want. Believe what you want. They'll no more tell you anything. Today, you're held accountable, not for what I say or do, but for what you read of the words of Jesus. Either you're going to do the words of Jesus, or you won't. You listen to me right now, you're going to hear my voice again today. You go, I'm hearing this, I'm saying the same thing. You're, going to, <laughs> you're either going to shut me off, or you're going to say, well, that old boy's got a point. That's right. You better repent. You better turn to Jesus. If you don't, you're going to burn in that fire. There's no way to get up about it. You're going to get old, let me tell you something. They're going to put that sign up one day in your little hospital area. Do not resuscitate. The closer you get to death's door, the more serious you'll get. I've met a lot of people my 71 years and 43 as a missionary. Tough as nails, anti-Christ, anti-Bible, anti-religion. And I'm talking about religionists. These religionists, these so-called Christian religionists in the mainline Protestant denominations in the United States, Europe, and Australia, they are the worst hard-headed people you ever run across. They'll do what they want, they'll believe what they want, and they're not listening to anybody else. All right? And that's a really sad state. Today's the day of salvation. It's up to you to individually read the New Testament truths of Jesus. You will decide if you want Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You will, three things will happen when you become spiritually born again. Number one, you're going to say to God you're sorry for your rebellious attitude towards God. Number two, you're going to want Jesus as your Savior. Number three, you're going to read the truths of Jesus in the Protestant, Christian Bible, New Testament, and agree to do that. That's repentance. You turn to and obey. If you don't repent, if you don't turn to and obey, you're not a Christian. If you think you can turn to a Baptist church, you're a sinner going to hell. You think you can turn to a, a Methodist or Osteen or a Swagger, a Joyce Myers, a Penny Hinn. <laughs> you're going to hell. These old boys, they're, and they're after your money. All right? Don't ever think don't ever think they care about your soul. That is the biggest joke in the world. You tell me why somebody writes a book. They wouldn't write a book and they should give it away free. Alright? Jesus doesn't cost you anything but your life. I gotta go. Today's Friday. I'll be back Monday morning, 9 o'clock Central Standard Time here in the States. Selma will be coming on at uh, on Sunday at 11 o'clock, and then she'll be on Tuesday and Wednesday next week. But I'll be back next Monday. It's Friday now. Remember, folks, you're in control of your spiritual destiny. Look to the Lord. Read His Word. Believe in what He says. If you don't, you go into the fire. See you Monday, 9 o'clock.